because we're cruel, heartless bastards. More specifically, I am a cruel, heartless bastard. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Just call it mod abuse. Uh, that will make everything okay. So, let us find out if we are going to experience some technical difficulties with this one. Um, that's kind of been the name of the game as we go. Hello and welcome everybody to the Air Mech attempt at Carry Me number 4 tournament. <laughs> so we have Bubble Squid going against Ass Backwards. You insert tentacle porn reference here. Uh, ultimately, we are going to have to see who is the better carry. Uh, Alomius and Random, not actually sure whose ranking is what, but they are our green team down in the bottom right. The map is Duel. Uh, they will be going against Pave and Omega Man BG1. What does BG stand for? Let's say Big Gun. Uh, that, that, that's gonna be our story. We'll stick to that one. Since this is Duel, we usually see a typical opener go the same way. Both teams will generally gravitate towards the corners first and then they will migrate from the corners out to somewhere else, like the next outpost. Now, Pave is going to abduct that neutral T-45 turret. T-45's notorious for being pretty bad. Um, so it does actually die to basic infantry, but that's okay. That's okay. Pave getting a little bit of experience for that, getting the brownie points. Neither of these outposts is actually in carbon hands yet, um, but they do capture this one in the corner. And we will get this one as well. So ultimately, carbon is on par. Green team doing the same thing, going for the corner first, locking down that close outpost, locking down the forward, and then moving on, trying to take something else, get a little bit fancy. So Dillo's. So these small, scrappy light tanks, those are armadillos. Generally, they're going to be lower hit points, better efficiency as far as the overall credits they cost for the damage they put out. But uh, not really going to be... Not really going to have high regard in the esteem of most air mech players, sadly. So this is a little bit of a slow start, unfortunately. Uh, so, leapfrogging up with these tanks, none of them quite in range yet. Alomius may try to leapfrog a little bit closer. Uh, Pave and Omega Man, what are they going to do? They are going to straight up push. Now, are they using custom waypoints or R Command? Uh, looks like, okay, they custom set them to just creep a little bit closer. That way they don't have to individually pick up and ferry each individual one. Now, in this particular map on Duel, they do have neutral lockboxes that spawn in about 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and go. Uh, these things can be sold for money. Uh, and it looks like we did see those over on the other side. Random does pick up the first lockbox. Second one goes completely unclaimed. Those give you about 6,000 credits, although they do actually get value over time. Uh, they're similar to money makers in that respect. Pavement Man getting the kill on Alomius. So... Ultimately, it looks like the majority of aggression in this particular game is going to be single units ferried forward uh, one at a time to ensure minimum adequacy. Um, but Pave getting a little brave here, actually using a push command. Uh, looks like these tanks are on R. Now they are going to drive right into a neutral Goliath, which is going to get multiple kills, would be my anticipation. So that flacker is not long for this world. He goes to meet his maker. Unfortunately, that is Pavement Man. So Pave also probably going to get killed sometime in the future. Uh, but Alomius trying to mount a defense. These carbon units are coming in. They're prioritizing the outpost, not the units, which means that they will get overcome. This is a good hold by Alomius. Killing Pave, what did I just tell you? Uh, and is going to wipe out all of those carbon tanks. Carbon now very much on the back foot. Green team has plenty of units to just roll right in here. But as Osprey, it is a little bit intimidating to use actual commands other than hold position. And as Osprey, it is a little bit unusual to see so many Dillos. Omega Man, as the Angel, as that Sniper Mech, is going to be able to pull down a lot of those Dillos pretty quick. Um, 
This is one reason why Osprey gains effectiveness when it uses heavier units, things that aren't as easily picked off, because if your units have a higher hit point pool, they will be able to stay alive longer. Dude, just take off. Nope. Took off just a little bit too late there, so random getting the kill on Omega Man. That leaves green team firmly in the lead. Uh, this middle outpost should get captured shortly, uh, and there will be almost nothing left for the carbon team to contest this. So all green needs is a couple of infantry, and they can roll through. Uh, it's a 47 to 24 upkeep advantage. Literally the only thing preventing them from capturing any more outposts is their own personal inhibitions. But that's okay. So, Random and Omega getting in a tussle there. Random cloaking out with that Neo is able to disappear. Uh, also, sabotaging the minimap briefly for these Carbon Team players, but not going to be able to capitalize on that on too much. Omega Man probably going to get killed here is Stasis, can't take off, and getting tagged by the Hunter Seeker while he's still on the ground, unfortunately. Carbon Team T99 does get taken down and begin this slow, methodical push. Alomius with the bad manners, basically dropping three to four Seekers directly on top of a player while allowing the Neo to stasis them. That prevents them from taking off to escape the Seekers. It also prevents them from moving very quickly to escape the Seekers. So literally on the offense here with only anti-air and using his healing to heal the one tank that's here, Unfortunately, the socketed T-99 is going to be able to take those out. And so Carbon Team still mounting a decent push. Now, if if Green were to actually, you know, press in with the majority of their m units, they would find that there's just overwhelming numbers. Even if they're not outstandingly efficient with the use of those units, uh, just having more units in there, uh, in the thick of it, is ultimately going to prove more effective. But either way, uh, Elomia starting to pump out Goliaths. Uh, this is the Gothic Goliath skin. Doesn't actually give it any increased damage or anything, but makes it look pretty damn cool, if I do say so myself. Uh, so cranking out Goliaths, those big late-game heavy tanks, uh, transitioning into those heavier units is going to make the Osprey even scarier. I know that, that doesn't necessarily seem all that possible. Uh, dropping a couple artillery to try and get to work on those socketed T-99s. Ultimately, all green team needs to do now is get their tanks together in one spot, hover over them, and press the key labeled T. Uh, it's right between R and Y. Uh, it can be a hard one to find for some players, but ultimately you have a completely undefended fort and a variety of tanks for the green team with no immediate means to stop those tanks from the carbon team. Uh, so ultimately just waiting waiting for this game to end at this point uh although carbon team i don't want to knock them out just yet they can still salvage this but they have to get creative they cannot just go head to head uh because the angel's damage is going to be mostly mitigated by the osprey heals pavement man trying to get cheeky go up the rear that didn't come out right, uh, and just drop on the fort. Now, fort damage is not going to help you in any tangible way unless you can destroy the fort. So ultimately, these tanks might be better placed on maybe the corner outpost or the close outpost, somewhere where he can actually capture ground. Trying to get out of there, I believe, with the tank and cargo? No, no, he has lost the tank. Uh, meanwhile, still trying to get some long-range damage done. Alomius... Uh, going in with the artillery. Uh, but these are easily spotted by the Carbon Team. Omega Man trying to get some extra cash. The outpost advantage for the green team is basically starving Carbon, both for upkeep as well as cash. Outposts are what give you your money. So we've got a 94 to 38 upkeep advantage right now, and that 94 turns into 100. What that means is that green team says, yes, we are completely maxed out on units. Yes, all we have to do is push and we win the game, but let us try to build Whoppers, this unit that artificially increases our unit cap so that we can get even more tanks and pad this advantage even further. Uh, ultimately, this is not going to be easy for all of these tanks to get killed. You have a variety of tanks. You have Gemini, you have Goliath, you have Seekers, you have Buster tanks for the love of God. 
Uh, so just about everything that carbon can muster is going to be easily taken care of. And there's just way too much green here. Those are gangsters. Those are the uncounterable, almost light unit, but just too strong to call a light unit. Really, the only downside is their cost. But when you have this much money and this hard of an advantage, uh, it really doesn't matter what things cost to you. And so those are going to be blasting in, uh, losing a couple units to the mines. These appear to be light mines. Uh, who builds light mines? Those are heavy mines. Uh, jack or gangster is normally fast enough to avoid any damage from heavy mines. Um, but, unfortunately, they've been trapped in the same pile as these Longhorns, so they're just not going to be able to make any anything happen with that. Sending in all of the units, one at a time. Uh, but finally, the tanks on the backup. We should actually get some results here. Carbon Team has had plenty of time to prepare. Um, but once again, literally three to one in the units. So if you're inefficient, it doesn't even matter. These are all completely replaceable. So we've got Gemini, Seekers, Busters just rolling in on T-Command. That one lunchbox from the Carbon Team will give this fort an overshield and absorb a little bit of that damage. So ultimately, this is a fairly good hold from Carbon Team so far. But uh, Olomi is taking advantage of this moment and capturing the far left outpost as well. So Carbon Team now owns the entire map. That's why you see this imminent danger countdown right now. And so, ultimately, in about eight seconds, this fort's going to start shooting itself in the foot, literally. And we'll see this fort health start to tick down and tick down. And so now, this, this fort is not long for this world. Green Team just needs to push in and do damage to the fort, and that'll be GG. Pave and Omega Man trying desperately, um, but all the units they put out onto the field are getting sniped and taken out. Uh, by Alomius's gangsters. Alomius dropping units on the fort and just doing direct damage himself, saving each of these gangsters that is kill getting killed by this angel. Now, ultimately, the angel takes way too long to put in enough damage to actually kill these gangsters. The Osprey is able to outheal that angel's DPS, so ultimately, when you're in an angel versus Osprey battle, as soon as these dense HP units start coming out, it's just GG. Speaking of which, GG. Ultimately, this game is going to get taken by... Oh, shoot. Was that ass backwards? Or was that bubble squid? Honestly.